Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Woody Allen Retrospective. I am your host, Ronald Wanda, and I'm joined once again with my buddy, my co-host, the one and only, Arsenal of the Century, Simon Red. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think a guy named Harry this week is a bigger asshole than I am, or maybe equal footing. I would say equal. I have to share that title with somebody now. I will see, guys. <laughs> Simon is alluding to something, but guys, if you missed our last discussion... We were actually talking about a movie, a sidestep movie that I really put Simon through the ringer on. We're talking about that semi-documentary, maybe it was a kind of a Soon Ying puff piece, I don't know, 1997's Wild Man Blues. If you're on YouTube, click on the top right corner to go back to that discussion. Guys, if you're watching us on YouTube, you should know, most of you already know, you've been following us on the podcast, we've been doing this for the whole year we're now in september at the time of this recording we've got a whole playlist of all the other woody allen movies we're coming to the end of the night guys and check out all the other reviews we've done that's what we do here on the woody allen retrospective review every movie and when we do that we do get into spoilers guys we get into spoilers we ruin it for you we want you to watch the movies before you listen to us but if you don't care and i know a lot of you guys just like listening to us because you're not a fan of woody allen and you're just casuals and you want to hear some casual guys talk about the Woody Allen movies. You're in the right place. So moving forward, we're going to talk about the next movie, a very special movie. And as always, I'll get Simon to introduce us to that movie in particular. Finally, no more sidesteps. We can jump back right into the middle of it because the 90s is a good decade for Woody. And I'll tell you up front, I love this movie. This one, uh, this one was terrific. I'm so shocked. I'm so shocked. Simon yeah, I know. This movie. You're, 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 you're shocked. Somebody made a movie about me and I love it. How, how, how freaking crazy is that? If you didn't guess, we're talking about Deconstructing Harry from 1997. And needless to say, this movie's awesome. It is great. I mean, okay, <laughs> to get into more detail, people call this the I don't give a fuck Woody Allen movie because that, that's exactly what he does. He throws everything out the window and says, you wanted to know who I am? You wanted to see Woody Allen? You think you know me? Well, guess again, I'll show you. I'll write a whole movie about me writing a whole movie about writing a movie about what you think that I think that you think about me. But I really think something else and the movie's going to tell you and you will get it. You know, I just want to jump in right now and say every time we do these reviews, what we always criticize Woody Allen for is always saying that, oh, these movies aren't me. They're not based on my real life when they clearly are. And now we finally get a movie that is a complete ridiculous caricature of his character. And I can agree, Woody. Okay, this time, maybe this isn't you. Just maybe this time. Look, I, I had the exact opposite reaction. Because <laughs> this mother Woody Allen is the ultimate troll. I'm telling you. Because in the first scene of this movie... His character gets accused of taking his personal life and then writing, you know, stories about it. So basically his fiction is his own reality, his own personal life. And his character keeps saying, no, that's not me. That's not me. I don't use that. But I'm like, you're doing it right now. Oh, uh, shit. Woody Allen was so ahead of his time. He was a troll before the internet. He, 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 that, that's who he is. This whole movie is just a big fuck you to everybody. Now, if you're like, okay, wh what is this craziness? I thought, you know, the early 70s was uh, the experimental phase for Woody Allen. But this kind of feels like it. Because, again, he's just trolling people. This is not even a real movie. Up until he decides to go all genius and take the separate elements and combine it into one film. You're like, what do you mean? Well, this is an another kind of a, a collection of ideas, a collection of short stories, you know, a compilation film, which he did in the past, like... Uh, Annie Hall? A well, a little bit. Annie Hall was... Uh, the radio was Days? All Annie Hall? Radio, oh, radio Days? A, a narration reminded me of Radio Days, but, you know, everything you wanted to know about sex, but you were afraid, to, always afraid to ask, you know, that's a collection of short stories back-to-back -back with different titles. Correct. And even uh, the way Hannah and her sisters were split up into three parts, you know, this is the the family, that's the affair, that's the hyperbolic, I think he called the last segment about, about himself. Or uh... Yeah, I think Annie Hall has more of the cutaways. That's what I meant to say. Annie Hall has the cutaways he uses more when he's making the points as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. in terms of that, like, husbands and wives have that as well. I think uh, uh, Hannah and her sisters had a different title for his segment, but yeah. it doesn't matter. The, the point is that the glue here that ties all these ideas together, that 
and prepare for the shock. He is a writer, right? He is a writer who's divorced and his ex-wives have issues with him having an affairs <laughs> with people close to the family. I know, I know it sounds crazy. It's like, where did he get that idea? It's so alien. It's so not him. It's so different, so distant, right? So basically, he's a writer and he's in a part of his life where he's experiencing a bit of a writer's block and he keeps writing these short stories but can't seem to finish them. And then he talks about what he wrote in the past and other stories. And then we see these stories unfold in the movie. So we get introduced to his character and then other characters who are also him, but versions of him created by himself as characters in fiction. And the movie just starts at 100% and doesn't let go. He once again experiments with editing. It's more fast-paced, it's more rapid. We edit mid-scene, so we kind of jump to conclusions or jump to the, the meat of it. We don't have a lot of uh, filler dialogues. We, edit, we have a lot of rough cuts mid-dialogue. And right in the first scene, he gets accused of writing about himself, not caring whose life he ruins or you know what secrets he reveals, especially about an affair. And then he almost gets shot by this crazy-ass chick who pulls a gun on him. And that's the subtle part of the movie. After that, we just escalate into affairs, prostitution, kidnapping. It's a crazy-ass movie, but the craziest thing he did, and I'll tell you right now, the craziest thing he did, this motherfucker opened the bottle, and it, it can never seal it back. You know, there's that Mel Gibson movie, uh, what's it called, What Women Want? Yeah, yeah, the mind-reading one, yeah. Yeah, 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 where uh, basically Mel Gibson gains the power to hear women's thoughts yeah. so the movie's kind of a for men the movies is an insight of what women want what women think what women feel you know mm -hmm. so you can actually hear their thoughts well this movie's like that in reverse this is an insight for women of how a guy's brain works this is like entering a guy's mind. I, I, and I'm like, Woody, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah, a fucking arsehole. Let me just preface another thing that's like this. Simon. This guy is very unhinged. He's a fucking arsehole. You, yeah, this is you. Your mind, Simon, not my mind. I got I got traces, shadows, flickers of this uh, kind yeah, of bit. But you keep telling yourself that. No, no, no. He, he ruins all the classics. Like, first of all, Let's talk about. I know you want to get into the cast, and uh, I'll, I challenge you to name all the actors in this. Because, I mean, hot damn, Robbie Williams is, is in this. Uh, Robbie, Robbie Williams? You mean the singer? No, Robin. Robin. <laughs> you know, I love it when you slur your words. I heard you. Yeah, Robin Williams. Let me help you. Toby Maguire, Kirsty Alley, Judy Davis again, Judy Kavner again. Uh, Billy Crystal, goddammit, Stanley Tucci, Elizabeth Shue, Gina Louise Driver, Seinfeld, Veep. Paul Giamatti, you even get the returning character from fucking Manhattan, Mio Hemingway, Demi Moore. This isn't even the entire cast. Jesus, it, it, it is a fantastic cast. And this cast is when, insane. When, when when Woody starts talking about his character's origins, that you know, there he goes to this therapist like I almost got shot because I keep having these affairs, and I, and he's like, I started when I was young, and then the Tobey Maguire segment starts, right? And it's basically Tobey Maguire going around saying. I can't meet a woman who I don't want to fuck. And I just, just started laughing. I was like, yep, here we go. <laughs> so I just, just laid it all out there, Woody. And he's like, Reading my mind. Because to see what you really like, think, Simon. He's like, he's speaking my language right now. That's what you're thinking, Simon. Yeah, he was like, you know, I, I, I've been together with my girlfriend and I, I just, I, I don't feel it anymore. And But I feel it for someone else. And the doctor's like, who? Well, just about every other woman I meet, you know. <laughs> and again, the first movie we talked about, um, that dub movie he did, you know, when he read up the What's Japanese up, Tiger Lily? Movie. What's up, Tiger Yeah, what's up, Tiger? Mm -hmm. He was purring around with the this Asian chick yeah. at the end of the credits, right? Yeah. And then the Tobey Maguire segment has Tobey Maguire renting a hooker yeah. who's this crazy, you know, Asian, uh, chick. Sex, Asian chick who's like a sex expert and has her own outfit. And I'm like... Damn, he nails everything. He nails the awkwardness of getting a hooker and, you know, the... And loving it. <laughs> and, and loving it. And, and, you know, the discussion's like, oh, man, that's 50. I, I, I get a hotel? I, how can I get a hotel? That's, that's more money. And, then, and Woody cusses a lot in this movie, and I love it. He's like... And he's really sarcastic because in the story, uh, Tobey Maguire's close friend gets hit by a car, which is described as 
a great string of luck because now his apartment is free so toby can take the hooker there how great is that but then woody flips the script and he pulls on ingmar bergman where there's a knock on the door and guess what it's deaf yeah he's back you know yeah. we, have, we haven't seen deaf in a while in a so while. now he's back for a cameo <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's taking toby with him and that's the twist because deaf came for his friend who got hit by the car but because toby's in the apartment and the hooker knows him by the friend's name. Death basically won't believe him that it's not him. It's a very, it's one of those old school Woody Allen jokes infused in the 90s, which when I first saw, I thought, wow, Woody's really tapping into his old kind of silly, fantastical comedy ideas, but it, it really works here. And obviously, because we're seeing a younger actor, sorry, a younger Tobey Maguire putting this part with it in a modern age, it's really fresh and it, it really works as well. I mean, this is before Spider-Man, you know? This is years before Spider-Man. I yeah. think at this point, Tom Maguire's biggest credit was that unreleased movie him and Leonardo DiCaprio did that they both never want to talk about. <laughs> they kind of, I don't know what they did in that movie, but it's one of those things where That's they're a, like... I, I like that movie. It's a crazy, silly movie. It's, it's, it's them with yeah. some friends. I like the movie. I like the movie personally. But but that, that that's kind of like his big thing. So again, Woody just... Uh, I, I know they did that... Uh, what was it? Pleasant Will? He also did that one, but uh let me rein this in a little bit, Simon, because honestly, we got a lot to get through, and I, I want we can gush over this. I can already tell just from your attitude, your infusion, that you love this movie, you're gushing over it. But there's so many characters, so much to pass through, and I don't want to make this excessively long because again, this is for people who haven't watched the movie as well as those who have. Let me just say a little bit about the plot because you already did, but I do want to say honestly. There isn't a lot of plot because it doesn't really need it. It's just, again, like you said, this one character delving into the madness of his life using these characters that tell parts of his life in very different ways. And that's basically the story. This man, his life, his partners, everyone he affects, very simple. And you really are just enjoying the sheer chaos that Woody Allen's character, this person, is displaying. And what I said in the beginning was, again, Woody Allen in his other movies it's like oh these movies aren't really about me and i don't know why people say that when you can clearly see that in this one as i said before it's kind of like he really took this to the extreme okay i'm gonna do a movie of someone pretending to be everything everyone thinks about me to the extreme and all these bad things it just feels like the ultimate negative fucked up arsehole version of woody allen that everyone imagines of him in the most creative and a fuck you way. He doesn't even do it in like, um, it's a self-deprecating way, but it's in an also very entertaining way. And it's kind of like when someone, it's like that scene in 8 Mile where, you know, you're going to diss me. No, I'm going to diss me. I'm going to take all this shit you think about me. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say all this shit about me. I'm going to make money off that shit and I'm going to make you an awesome movie and you're going to love me for it. And this movie, as we'll get into other things as well, it's a fucking win because of that. And honestly, if you've been watching all the Woody Allen movies up to this point, the 90s is a very brash era, very raw. This has got the same energy of Husbands and Wives with the pure swearing. Judy Davis, again, playing a very similar character to Husbands and Wives, very neurotic, insanely crazy woman. It's got the energy of Husbands and Wives. It's got the energy of the 90s. And you do not really see that again in Woody Allen, not to this extent. And that's what makes this movie very special. And again, Woody could have done this in a, in a kind of tasteless way, you know, being too extreme, just swearing for swearing's sake. But nope, with the kind of skill and class Woody Allen has, he shows at this age, at this career, he can even step out and do something very outlandish and make it another masterpiece. And yeah, this, this movie is its own masterpiece, but I'll get into more of that. I just wanted to stop and say that before we actually get into the characters, because honestly, we can talk about each and every character and what they bring to the table. Hey, you know what this movie has also? Titties. You know what makes those cities special as well? They're black. Oh, you, we got old colors, but yeah, we got we got some booty. We got some booty. We got some, we got some color variety. Finally, you know, Woody keeping it diverse. I have to say, this is this is clearly, honestly, I'm pretty sure. Obviously, we're gonna find out if I'm wrong or not. This might be Woody's most focused black character in his whole filmography, <laughs> which is which is saying something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the escort. I've got the actress's name here. I know I saw her in something else too. She's been in a lot. Actually, she mostly had a hits in the 90s. She was actually in, in um, she was in the Heat. Oh, damn. She was in Heat. Okay. She was in Heat. I don't think she was a, a major character. I hope I don't have to edit this down. Hazel Goodman. 
Hazel Goodman, there she is. And um, again, seeing her being this black central character, even though she's a prostitute, she shines in the movie and she has a lot of conversations with the Allen. She's like kind of <laughs> his right hand man through the movie. And, and let me tell you something about Hollywood in the 90s. Black. I ain't talking about chocolate. I ain't talking about milk chocolate. No, about... no, 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 no. She black. She, she black. She's the authentic. She's the she's the, the cocoa right off from the tree. And maybe that's Is that why... racist? I know. Uh, I don't... No, 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 no. I, was, <laughs> look, I know you're white. Right. I agree with that. She's dark. And I think it's notable because only now in Hollywood are we seeing colors that are dark skin black and the Nilupa Pianga, I can't even say her name. You know, the chick from Star Wars, I can't remember. Yeah, uh, Lupita Nyong. Yeah, thank you. From Star Wars, Horror is a Slave. We're only seeing now fully embraced black yeah, skin She chicks. was a damn animated character in Star Wars, you motherfucker. That's the worst example. Well, I guess you're right, because you don't actually see her as a character. I did say Twelve is a Slave as well. So, to, to be, uh, that's, a, that's a damn stereotype. You need to... And she did, do, be... she did do a, a Disney movie as well, where she's a... Uh, she's the mom of a world-class chess player. Why are you putting me to the test, Simon? I know this lady, okay? Anyway, yeah, because you're racist. I'm representing <laughs> black people here, okay? You, Fair enough, fine, you, You're fine. self-hating. You, you know, you're the third segment of self-hating Jews. But we'll get to that, yeah. She's great. It's, glad to, it's good to see her. And sorry, I'll let you continue. No, no, no. Yeah, it's good to see her. But this is what I'm go- I wanted to get, get out. And I remembered it while you were looking up the name. Woody, is, he's just ahead of his time. You know what this is? This is a 90s raunch comedy before those were popular. You know the ones that came in at the end of the 90s? More like the 2000s, the American Pies and all that crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. End of the 90s, early 2000s, because people describe this as, you know, Woody going the extra step, right? Being more raunchy, more outspoken, more cussing. I'm like, look at every comedy today. They're all about the extreme. They don't even have comedy in them anymore. It's just shock humor. It's like... I will co- I will correct you and actually give Woody even more pots because what I agree with what you said, but in the 2000s, those raunchy comedies are always for a younger audience. They haven't only now are we getting those raunchy Judd Apatow movies with the 40, you know, 40 year old virgin and all yeah, these, yeah. that's more in the 2010s, even back yeah. in the 2000s, you weren't getting middle aged or older people having watched your comedies because it was all about the youth back then. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's also true. I mean, yeah, you're right. We, I think the Meryl Streep, Alec Baldwin movie, it's complicated, kind of started the trend sure. a, a little bit as well, where they were like, okay, that was a raunchy comedy uh, and a romantic comedy but with an older cast. And, you know, now they try to do hybrids. Like the movie I remembered is, a, what was it? Bad Grandpa or something with Robert De Niro and Zac Afron, which was a really bad movie that was just about gross out jokes. You yeah. know, I'm like... Good example though. Good example though, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So... Over the years, they, they really took this formula that Woody just threw in there where he was like, how about I be a little bit more realistic and raunchy? And they just try to replicate it, but they can't do it as well as he does it. And there are so many small cues in the, this film where you could tell other people just want to blatantly copy it. Like one of them, was, again, HBO just lives off of Woody Allen. You know how husbands and wives, they took uh, some of the interview segments and basically turned it into Sex in the City. Yeah. Here... The next segment after Tobey Maguire, the next short story is about, again, a version of Woody Allen's character falling in love with his therapist. I'm like, that's the damn Sopranos. That's one of the main thing in the Sopranos. <laughs> I mean, it's just, and that came out two years after this. I don't want to act like Woody Allen is a complete source of knowledge. I know we do that a lot. I'm not. I, I don't want people to think that we just worship Woody Allen and everyone steals off. No, him. no, no, no. I of can course, see the no. parallels. What you're saying, I do agree that it's. I do agree. He got to some of these things first. Even if people didn't take the inspiration from him, he did it first. And and I don't think he's accredited to a lot of these creative ideas to this day. And I think that is the most shocking thing of all when you watch these movies in 2017. Yeah, and I mean, the reason I'm pointing it out, because with the 80s going into the 90s and these uh, side projects, you know, we went through a good 10, 15 episodes of so-so movies yeah. You know, kind of stuff that Woody does on the download. He does it easy. Most recently, even in the 90s, I think most of his stuff is very strong. But that Bullets Over Broadway, that was kind of meh. You know, I think I we both it. agreed on it. I liked it. But, but it was but, it was meh overall, but I liked it. I thought it was decent. I thought, it's not it's not great, but you're right. I'll, I'll, I'll start to I'm just being polite when I say we. I mean, we both know your opinion don't matter, okay? So I'm just I'm just speaking the truth and you're going to you. agree. Okay, yeah. I, I see you nodding your head anyway. Fuck you. But uh, point is... So we had a couple of episodes where he, he's just so-so. 
So it's really important that with these movies, I want to point out how this guy is actually super creative. And this image of him, of being so innovative and tackling subjects and inf being influential is never highlighted. You always hear people talk about Annie Hall yeah. and, you know, Woody Allen is a comedian. And that's basically and it. And Manhattan. Like, and that's it. And, yeah. And, yeah, Manhattan, obviously. So those early films usually starts with Annie Hall. And I also like Manhattan or one of the other films. And don't get me wrong. I love both of those movies as well. I mean, Woody Allen hates him. But, <laughs> you know, because maybe uh, those movies are about somebody who he doesn't like anymore. Not about himself, of to course. Be, to know, be just, fair, just fictional. most of these artists that um, claim geniuses, they don't put as much weight in their own work as other people do anyway. So that's like a common trait of anyone that's celebrated. Do you think Da Vinci said, my work's a masterpiece, everyone will love this. It's like, uh, you know, they, they aspire to something and then a the whole group of people worship for them, worship them for it after the fact. But they, they're never as big as the fans of their own work as the fan base in the general. So I just think that's a trend of popular or genius people in general. Although he loves Stardust Memories. and Again, I, a movie nobody likes. <laughs> a movie that generally people do not like. So that's just flipping the coin. Well, I heard, I heard recently that the fan base, the core Woody Allen fans, have warmed up to it. But I want to reiterate that Fucking that movie, hipsters. Fucking hipsters, yeah. Exactly. That I want to reiterate that that movie's garbage because this <laughs> is the same movie but done well. This is what Stardust Memory should have been. And Don't compare the two. Don't compare the two. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, I hear what you're I'm saying. Uh, I was looking up something about yeah. the film, I am reading an article comparing it to Stardust Memories. It's, uh, called, it's calling it a reworking. Anyway, uh, I, I decided it's a reworking. Uh, okay. Uh, whatever. All right. Basically, this is what it should have been. This is the real deal. This is the real, oh, I don't write movies about myself. I don't know why people say that. So let me make a movie about myself where I don't know why people say I make movies about myself movie. Okay, this, this is <laughs> this is the ultimate jack-in-a-box movie. And it only gets better. I mean, I want you to, to give me your opinion. I've got too much to say. I've got way too much to say. I, I know he's being an asshole throughout the entire film. And he's spoiling all the male secrets, just giving people insight of how men think. But even to Tobey Maguire's point, he was talking about not being able to meet a woman without thinking about having sex with her. I'm like, I'm thinking about having sex with every actress in the movie. And when Denny Moore comes on, mm -hmm. 90s Denny Moore, I'm mm -hmm. like, now now I'm actually starting, you know? It's like, you know, I'm getting ready to have sex right now. Holy not to God. imagine Elizabeth Shue. Do you know how much I adore Elizabeth Shue? I said to you in the previous recording, Woody Allen, this motherfucker, he admitted in the interview that he can't help himself even though he's getting older and even though he knows he's breaking the viewer's kind of immersion in the movie by casting himself, his old ass self, as the male leading protagonist, when you see him, you know, lips up Elizabeth Shue, gorgeous. I'm not trying to be ageist. I'm just like, you're pushing it, Woody. You're put your goddamn 60 something, all right? You ain't getting Elizabeth Shue. Now, to be fair, as a popular writer, it could happen. Obviously, celebrities, popular, that's just life. But again, you know, every single Woody Allen movie. And that's going to stop, especially in the 2000s. He's going to stop doing this, but it becomes a bit hilarious. And in this movie, it's still fine. He's a he's good enough actor to make it pass. And again, because he's a popular writer, it makes sense in the story. But I'm talking about Woody Allen in real life now. I'm like, Woody Allen, I hate you. Because you know why? You, you, you're kissing all the beautiful women in Hollywood. They still want to work with you, even after the controversy. You're married to a young Asian woman, and you're still lipsing up these Hollywood dames, dimes, beautiful women in your movies as well. I mean, you got it all, motherfucker. You have it all. <laughs> How can I not be jealous of this guy? Well, apparently, he hates his own life. He's never happy, so... You know, he, he loves his music, though. Uh, guys, I'm joking. I'm just joking. I'm not gonna gonna get hate on this. But what, what what did you what did you think about the actual plot, which is that he's being honored at the college he got thrown out of, which is very typical. Again. That's just a it's just a joke. That in itself is he got threw out of the college, and it only it's that is just a joke. It's just a one note joke. I don't mean in the derogatory way. It's a one note joke. It's just one joke that's used to pin the storyline, which is just funny. And even when that comes at the end. The joke pays off because it becomes a fantasy, which we'll get to in a minute. But I just thought that was a, a, a funny, silly joke for an excuse to have another trope in the movie done really well, the road trip, <laughs> which is yeah. short-lived. Yeah, where he has to take the hooker 
his son he kidnaps and a close friend who I guess the only friend that came who has a heart attack in the middle of the road trip and ends I up mean, dying. It sounds yeah. like a bad joke. I, my son, a hooker, a black hooker, and my friend who's got a heart attack. We all get in a car to go to my uh, an innovation for something I don't even deserve. It's a, this is a, this is a collection of mini jokes, mini stories, mini ideas based on an exaggerated version of him, and it fucking works. In it, it is it's so surreal. But I think the plot is simple, but it's divided in a very comedic way. In all these simple jokes, with all these little cutaways, with all these great actors, with this crass, insane humor that just makes it a fucking marvel. And I, I will say this: there's only one criticism I will give to the movie, and it's not—it's actually not a criticism as much as advice. This movie would be appreciated a lot more if you've seen Woody Allen's movies beforehand, because this is such a departure from Woody Allen usually does. It's a breath of fresh air. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work as a movie on its own. I'm just saying it works even better if you've watched a whole bunch of Woody Allen movies and you have a feel for what he's done in the past. Very contemporary, very beautiful, simple romances, you know, rich families in Hollywood. Even even jumping from the last movie, the musical, Everybody Says I Love You. Jump from that to this. Honestly, I think it's a treat. I just think it's a, this is appreciated a bit more in the collection of his movies. As a movie on its own, if you watch this movie, this was your first Woody Allen movie and you watch another one, you're probably going to feel a little bit like, what? It's the same guy? And then you watch a series of his movies after this. It's not the same It's not the same tone at all. This is that one in a hundred Woody Allen movie that is the the golden goose, you know? Absolutely. But also, it's just very well written. Like, the characters feel very real. Like, even though that the comedy gets absurd or extreme and we have a lot of fantasy segments when the fictional elements coming to life still everything is so well written like my favorite out of all three relationships he's depicting is the ex-wife who's the therapist curse the alley curse the alley the conversation they're having reminds me of the conversations i'm having with my girlfriend where oh, 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 oh. Simon, they, they, you, they, you, they, they they always have this friend right you better be careful simon before you get yourself in trouble i'm just warning you before you say anything else <laughs> But it's real because women have a friend. And if you say something simple like the sky is blue, the answer is, well, you will find that when it goes down, actually it turns purple. And I'm like, but surely we can agree that the sky is motherfucking blue, isn't it? Well, Ellie and I went on a walk and, you know, when it goes down, it's actually purple oranges. But I'm like, I'm sure we can agree that the sky is blue and Ellie's a fucking cunt anyway. And <laughs> All right. You know, Simon, let's, yeah, since, but... since you brought it up, let's talk about our favorite scenes. And I'm going to start with the one you're talking... I'm going to talk about one that you just hit on right now. There's a scene where Kirsty Alley, one of his ex-wives, is confronting him about him having an affair. And she's oh, just like... God. Why do you have to have an affair? My patience, my patience. And he's like, why are you taking so offense to it? It's not about the patience. It's about proximity. You're working with them. They're close to me. Here's rebuttal to everything <laughs> she says, yeah? <laughs> Only twist the knife. It's so insane. Everything she says, he's like, yeah, it was your patience, but it's about proximity. Yeah, because she had big tits. Yeah, it's not her tits, you know, but... I'm an old man. I mean, I couldn't even handle those tits. He just keeps on going more insane. And honestly, uh, is uh, he he reveals all the, the tricks. Like, first of all, when you get caught, you know, the whole don't overreact so much. You know, yeah, let's calm down. I mean, we can work this out. You know, that's a classic line, man. You know, Simon, you don't... let me correct you on something. Yeah, you say he's giving away the tricks. This is a movie. If a woman's accusing you of some shit, yeah, and she's caught you red handing. And you're making it, you're not even making excuses. You're trying to justify and play down what you've done. That's a recipe to get a bullet to the head. Yo, do you remember the nine, the 60 minute interview with this guy on CNN? 60 minutes. Uh, it, just think of, just watch this scene and then watch that interview. And tell me this guy didn't write his own life. And that's just... why he says she was sending people out to kill him. That's why she had a voodoo doll with knives in the doll. That's why she wanted him dead because of his blase, you know, 
you come with the pictures, you know. Yeah, well, 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 you, got, you, you, you got to take a position and then stick to it. Stand your ground like, you, you know, I did nothing wrong. It's a natural reaction. People have an affair, you know. This is, this is reminding that, that, me of that Shaggy song, It Wasn't Me. Except yo, for he, it, he's not saying it wasn't me, he's like, it wasn't me. So what? Yeah, It wasn't his, that bad. Ver- ver- yeah, his version is called It's Your Fault Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How could I not? <laughs> she caught me on the sofa. Exactly. How could I not? She even I called me on the, camera. I, I, I love, I love the part where she's like, she's going on about, which again, oh yeah, obviously this is, has nothing to do with Woody Allen's personal experiences, but she keeps going on about. But it's my patient. It's somebody close to me. How could you do this? Why not get a stranger, somebody in my house, my patient? And Woody's like, well, you know, think about who I meet. You know, we barely <laughs> exactly. go out. Proximity, <laughs> proximity. You weren't there. You, you know, it's in your house. It wasn't about, you know, uh, me targeting your client. It's just about the proximity. You know, it's, it's just who I meet. You know, you know. And, and then she's like, so now you're blaming me that we don't go out enough for you to meet random strangers to fuck. <laughs> And, and, he, like, and he's always he never says I'm sorry he never says no he just he just he adds fuel to the fire every single time he tries to play it down but he doesn't play it down he just kind of sidesteps like but you know it's uh it, honestly we can speak about this forever because honestly and there's yeah, a lot you of nev- you never say sorry you never admit you did anything wrong you don't want to incriminate yourself that's another main rule I don't want to perpetuate the old stereotype that nice guys finish last and bad boys get the girl. But if you look through the movie, he had how many ex-wives, how many beautiful women in the movie? I'm like, Woody, you're not perpetuating a good message here because you get all the women in this movie and even then some, you know what I mean? But let me talk about, look, look, let's move on to other scenes because this is going to be a long discussion, guys, because this, this is a great movie and I like to focus on the great movies. There's a scene in the movie. When I watched, I said this scene and it might be the best scene in the whole movie. Because it's surreal, it's insulting a whole bunch of people, and it's a Sim- <laughs> one, of, one of Simon's best things is attacking faith. It's when Woody Allen is taking the elevator down to hell. And as he's taking his elevator down to hell, you're hearing all the levels, it's like, and he, this is Woody again taking personal attacks, it's like floor one is the media, floor two is this, and you know, and he gets down to the bottom. And then who do we get? Honestly, probably my favorite scene in the movie is when he's in hell with the devil played by Billy Crystal and man the conversation he has with Billy Crystal is so fucking funny and that and that whole sad piece is amazing because when you go to hell the first thing you see is titties and naked women everywhere and you kind of feel like this ain't that bad you know I mean this is kind of falsely advertised and I that's mean- what Billy Crystal says he's like hey you know the saying better to rule in hell than to live in heaven he's like it's, I got all my shit here shit in it. he's like your birth for eternity he's like eh He's drinking Woody Allen and all the lines, you know. I mean, Billy Crystal was absolutely fantastic casting because he's so deadpan, he's so blasé. And again, it's a double, it's kind of a double negative because Woody Allen portrays him as a, as like a, he introduced him to one of his ex-girlfriend, like his second, second ex-girlfriend or whatever. And he went away with her and he blames and calls him the devil. They have this whole scene and just the whole interaction, whether Billy Crystal's the devil or when he's not the devil, when he's just his best friend. I just think that was fantastic casting. I actually wish it was in the movie a little bit more. Actually, that might be my, another criticism with the movie. Some of the bigger cast uh, featured uh, featured actors in the movie are not in the movie for very long. I know you can think oh, yeah. of some others, but... Robin Williams, especially. Robin was Williams. was the biggest name. Yeah, and name. he's not even in focus to make matters even worse. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, literally. That's the whole point of his character. Yeah, yeah he's, he's not, not even in focus. Not yeah. in focus. And I love Robin Williams, one of my all-time favorite actors. Love his, love his filmography. Uh, we're going to talk about him at some point, but... Yeah, yeah, well, he was fine. I mean, he wasn't in the movie for long. The, the part he played was fine. And uh, another person that wasn't in the movie for long, but has a, has actually opening scene. Jimmy Louis Dreyfus, Seinfeld, Veep, she has a scene. And hey, man, I know some of you Seinfeld fans will love this because you finally get to see Elaine having sex on screen and having some really watchy scenes. And she's a, she's a good comedian. Everyone knows she's a good comedian. She's good for it. She's great in the movie. She has a few more scenes than the other actors. But she's really great in the role. I think she does really well in the role. I agree. I agree. I mean, to me, the movie is just a masterpiece. Even when he meets his dad, that was terrific. Because he's like, what are you doing here? And, and the guy's like giving him all this. Like, he mistreated his son. He did this and that. And he's like, I, it's okay. It's okay. I forgive him. I forgive him. Just 
let him go to heaven. And his dad goes like, I'm Jewish. We don't believe in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, where do you want to go then? What do you? What the fuck do you want to do? He's like, I want to go to a Chinese restaurant. He's just like, just get him out of here. Just get, get him out. He's like, he, the, the, he's offered to get out of hell. He's like, I'm Jewish. We don't believe in heaven. Fuck you. <laughs> don't forget the whole scene with him and his sister talking about how she became more Jewish. And there's a whole cutaway scene to how you know he married he married the psychiatrist, the perfect woman, and then she became more Jewish. I mean, he's insulting all the religions here. I mean. This is definitely a collage of Woody Allen's best jokes. Shotgun through the movie, in these cutaway scenes like Annie Hall with all these great actors. And this review is running long, so let me wrap up my my part of the movie. Look, this movie is very, very funny looked upon. It is kind of forgotten, but this movie stands out as Woody Allen's most buckwild movie. Sex comedy, super raunchy. It really, I 100% sure, it doesn't get as wild as this. And um, it, it's definitely a stand-up movie. Probably my top five as well. I'm not sure. Top five, top ten. We'll, we'll have that discussion in the future as well. Top ten, without a doubt. One of his best movies to date. So refreshing. And I, I know I keep on saying this. But how can this guy get better as he gets older? I mean, this is... I know some. there's some directors like your boy. He's going to do probably do his next Batman movie at this point. <laughs> so, Joker movie. He's another director who's showing... Like as a fine wine, he ages and he gets even better as well. But Woody Allen, man, I still I, at this point in his career, I still can't believe he's making such masterpieces. But this is a very special movie for its creativity, for its raunchiness, and yeah, it's it's a absolutely fantastic movie, one of his best, and it's definitely a must see. But like, the only criticism I'd give is I think watch a couple of Woody Allen movies before this one. You appreciate it a bit more. But if you watch it on its own, you'll have a good time, definitely. But if you watch some of the other movies before, I think you'll appreciate it even more. Yo, there was no freaking rabbit stew or whatever in this one. So that already makes it, you know, a 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10 movie. That's wrong! The whole thing. You're wrong because I, I'm so glad you pulled it up, Simon, because at the end of the movie, I thought they were going to pull that shit. Thank oh, you for the, being oh, up. Yes, 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 yes. He almost did it. He, he almost, almost pulled it. it. At the end, I was like, oh my God, he's going to pull that shit. Simon's going to love hate. And he turned it around in the right fucking way. And just to clarify, guys, he's meant to be going to the ceremony, to university, to whatever award they're going to give him. It doesn't work out. I won't say why. But then <laughs> he turns. To, he has this kind of a lucid dream where he does get this award. And then you actually see a shot of the whole cast everyone clapping their hands giving this and i thought to myself at that point wait a minute is this gonna turn into this whole film was a fucking dream even if it was it still would have been a, a 10 times better movie than memories that i will draw a comparison to that's a clear comparison but the movie just doesn't end there that saw memories are so it's ambiguous they make it clear that he's just having a fucking dream and then he goes to write the movie at the end to tell in the movie in the best possible way so that is how you do a fucking dream properly Oh yeah, and, and it's and actually, you know, that's why this movie is great, because he manages even to sneak a lot of heart into this. Because after depicting this awfully flawed character, who of, obviously has nothing in common with himself in real life, he <laughs> he goes on to say, you know, a, a theme in the movie is like, the only good thing about me is my imagination, which again, even in the last thing we reviewed uh what was it uh wild man was blues he yeah. kept going on about like i'm not good at a lot of things i'm good at a few things and i stick to that which is writing creativity you know art that's a theme in the movie that his character has only his imagination he sucks at everything else sure so it's only fitting that in the end of his creations all his characters give him this award give him this acknowledgement and he's thanking them like Look, you guys saved me. You guys saved my life sometimes. I love all of you. And that's kind of like Woody's bittersweet message even to his own films that he doesn't really praise, but he's like, I do love what I create. Yeah. You know, I do love my characters and I'm thankful for all of you. And they're kind of like his family, which is a very bittersweet ending. And the rest of the movie, I mean, I could name classic lines day and night. Of course, another another little classic male line is don't fall in love with me you go into a relationship and you want to pull the brakes a little bit not necessarily the handbrake just tap tap it with your foot a bit to slow things down you just go with the don't fall in love with me don't fall in love with me and of course then 
there's the girl that ended up leaving him. And he's like, I love you. Why did you leave me? I thought you were in love with me. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, another classic twist that he burned Clinton so bad, man. This is the 90s. And uh, you got to love Woody over the decades that he has a good joke for all the presidents because he's the, describing himself as an awful person. And he's like, but but you wouldn't get this from anybody else. Like the president of the United States doesn't want to sleep with every woman, woman she meets. Oh, bad example. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't get it, but you know that was the that was the Monica Lewinsky era, you know, for Clinton, a bit of a scandal right there. Yeah. A lot of things were coming out about his, you know, private life. It's just great. It's really, really funny for all the people who were missing the comedic Woody Allen. It's that, but done in such a great way. He can really make a very raunchy movie in a very classy way. I, I know that's kind of a paradox, but it's like he became such a good filmmaker. Over the past couple of projects he did in the 90s, especially that everything's top notch storytelling, editing, cinematography, and the way he ties things together and actually gives it a quality emotional ending. I'm like, wow, you just made a raunchy sex comedy that was smart, had a meaningful message and actually a pretty good character arc for a character where the whole point was he never changes anyway. That's a lot to accomplish in something that feels very organic and inspired and autobiographical yeah but it takes actually a lot of work to put these pieces together and and make such a well constructed movie yeah. so yeah hats off this is definitely one of his best i can't praise it enough and you know i don't I, i'm gonna stop just because this is not as focused as some of the other stuff we talked about because there's so much to point out and so many things to have an enjoyable conversation about yeah. so really just just share the movie and share the conversation because this is really a good one 100 percent. and on that note it should be obvious that this is a favorite for the fans if you look on the what on tomorrow's idb score definitely not as high as i thought would be actually it's like in the high sevens eights but it was nominated for oscar of course nominated not one which I'll talk about some of the ones that did win because I actually had to look something like what what beat this movie at the time? There's some movies that like, okay, so so it did get nominated for the <laughs> it did get nominated for Oscar. So I'm looking at 997, the other Oscars at the time, and uh, looks like we've got is it uh, the English Patient was a big one, wasn't it? Oh, I freaking hate that movie. Fargo, the English Patient, uh, Jerry uh, Maguire. Yeah, there was a few. I I can't see which one won, but was it Fargo? It was Fargo. Okay, that's not that bad. The English Patient, I, I, I have, I hate that movie. Ralph finds. I'm like, uh, Rafe or Rob. I'm like, your name is Ralph. Okay, try to <laughs> stop, stop trying to be fancy. Okay. I think it's other people that, that actually pronounce it way, but either way, look, man. Just fuck him. Fuck that movie. One of the best movies. This is one of the times that I, I can't wait to get to the end of his filmography to see where we rank this up in our top tens. But again, guys, we praise this movie to high heaven. Again, it's one kind of in everyone's top 10 is so special for what it is but guys if you watch the movie you agree with us disagree with us let us know what you think leave a comment in the comment section down below and you know simon after all the sidesteps i was happy this was the one to return us to form to get back onto the core filmography yeah man i enjoyed this one a lot thanks for coming on this one simon guys if you're watching on youtube subscribe to the channel by pressing that subscribe button don't forget to check out the annotations on the screen to check out all the other players we do here we do have the website dedicated to everything we do for the woody allen stuff in particular particular sorry woody allen retro.com thank you for listening on the podcast thanks for the thumbs up and guys we'll see you on the next long ass well probably not as long as this one recording <laughs>